There are seven of them, each one blessed with powers far beyond the realm of the ordinary human being. By day, they fight crime. But at night, at night they become other. They become vengeance. They become the Copper Bottom Man! Thank you very much. 
And that, I'm afraid to say, is all my check. I, it's pathetic. Is there anybody here who speaks English? Well, that's, uh, that's a bit of a relief. If, you're, if you don't speak English, uh, but you're, you're sitting next to someone who does, then perhaps that person could translate. Um, not during the songs, but maybe in between. Uh, and, and who knows, maybe uh, you will begin a, a whole beautiful relationship will blossom between the two of you and maybe, you, maybe tonight is the beginning of something special. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> it's already started by then. <laughs> That's excellent. Start as you mean to go on, I say. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you so much. It's an enormous honor to have so many people come out tonight and, and uh, watch me stand between you and a fantastic band. What is going on? Why, why, why would you do that? I realize it is an act of faith, an act of trust. Um, if, after all, you were sitting on an airplane and the pilot's voice came over the PA and said, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I used to be a dentist. <laughs> but I've just always wanted to do this. Well, you would be nervous. You would be nervous. So, and, and I understand that people are nervous seeing an actor standing between uh, you and a great band. But I want to reassure you about the greatness of this band. I want to assure you that whatever mistakes I make, I will. <laughs> you... You are in very, very safe hands with the ladies and gentlemen behind me. The best band in the world, the Copper Bottle Man! <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> if I'm saying that right. Um, but I, I, I was in this beautiful city about 20 years ago. I feel as if I know the city a little bit, not well, but a little bit. And I did tell the band, I promised the band that when we came here tonight, they could be assured of a huge welcome. So, can we just try it again? <laughs> It sounds to me as if you are in good voice. Is everybody feeling like uh, they're feeling in good voice? You're ready to maybe sing? <laughs> okay, some people are ready to sing. And it's usually the men who go, oh, God. But, but let me explain. The, the song we're going to do, we're going to start off with a song now. This is an old Earl King song. Actually, wait, wait a minute, I should move. The song is called Come On Baby Let The Good Times Roll. I don't need to try to do And my theory is that if we can say it or sing it, better still, then maybe, just maybe, it will come true. So it's a question of how much we sing now determines how much the good times roll later on. So let's give this a practice. You, you have one line. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. It goes like this. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. See, it's very simple. <laughs> I make it look difficult, but it is very simple. 
Okay, so everyone now, we're going to give this a go. Ready? And come on, baby. Always time. I understand. I know. I know. Bright lights. It's very, it's very inhibiting. But anyway, let's give this a go. Come on, baby, let the good times. Okay. So that's everybody whose first name begins with A. Now, how about everybody does it? Okay. You're up against some stiff competition, by the way. I don't want to have to list the cities who've done this better than you, all right? Now, that would be unpleasant. Okay, here we go. One more, one more try at this. Come on, me. Yes, see, it's coming. It's coming. One more. Big, 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 big voices from here, from here. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Let's give this...
which I'm going to do a song now. This is another. This is a very old song called uh, Evening.
Gavin Earl and Judy Clark. Oh, that was, uh, that was Gabby and Jean, but also, I must also draw your attention to the gentleman over there who is not, he doesn't have a guitar now. He had a guitar a moment ago. Uh, he is now strapped on a cappuccino machine. Um, but he is, uh, he's capable of, you know, guitars, banjos, uh, keyboards, accordions, you name it, he can do it. It's really very annoying. The incredible Mark Goldenberg from the city of Chicago! reason that Mark is strapped on an accordion is that uh, not long ago we were lucky enough to visit the wonderful uh, uh, country of Argentina, which as you all know is the home of Tango. <laughs> <laughs> well, give it a moment, hold on a second. <laughs> um, and we were so amazed and impressed and, and inspired by the wonderful music that we heard and saw, the dancing that we saw, that we decided that we would try and add a tango. And we settled on this uh, very old uh, tune. It's called El Choclo. Uh, actually, I know I'm going to put the lapels out. <laughs> <laughs> now I look like I'm in the Poseidon adventure. Um, this, is, uh, this is a very old tune. El Choclo in Spanish means uh, the corn cob, which is not a very promising name for a tango, uh, admittedly, but it was actually the name of a nightclub in Buenos Aires called, uh, uh, anyway, there was a, this beautiful song was written. Years later, some English lyrics were written that were recorded by, uh, the song was recorded by Louis Armstrong and uh, Georgia Gibbs and various others. And, uh, we decided that we would uh, put these two things together, the English version and the Spanish version, into one song. Gabby is now going to sing for us, El Choclo, Kiss of Fire.
bine. One lone whistle. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. I will, I will treasure that whistle. Thank you. Actually, uh, not only am I an idiot who tried to sing after G, but uh, I'm a double idiot because we're now going to try to do a song that was made famous by the most famous singer who ever walked the planet. And so this is this is doubly stupid. Um, but what the hell? You know, what's the worst that could happen? Um, this song was made famous by the great Elvis Presley. This is Mystery Train.
Almighty, Herman Matthews on drums. This is one of my favorite parts of the evening where I get to say this sentence. This is a song of our first album. This is such a thrill to sing that. Um, we have, obviously that means we've done a second album, but this is, happens to be off the first. This is a song by, uh, uh, to my mind, one of the greatest of all the American folk singers, somewhere. It's a fellow by the name of Len Burley, and this is called You Don't Know My Mind. Another very old song. This is uh, by a fellow called Kansas Joe McCoy. He wrote this song, he recorded it just once, and then uh, very soon after that, he wrote a different set of lyrics. Uh, and the song became a huge hit for lots of uh, female singers who came after him. 
But uh, we decided that we would, because we're just perverse, um, <laughs> we decided we would go back and do the original Kansas Joe McCoy version, which Gabby's going to sing for us. It's called The Weed Smoker's Dream.
we've done it. We are going to, we have not, I totally promise you, we've not done this song a hundred times. Um, um, this is a, another very old song. This is uh, a song by the great Hoagie Carmichael. This is called Lazy River. Up a lazy river by the old mirror run Up a lazy, lazy river in the noonday sun Linger in the shade of a kind old tree Come away your troubles, dream a dream of me Oh, up a lazy river where the robin song Brings a bright new morning where we can float along Blue skies up above Everyone's in love On the lazy river I'm happy with your name On the lazy river Oh! 
from 
enough for I think for about what would it be? Mm. About a quarter of a degree each. <laughs> it's not a lot, is it? Um, anyway, think about it. This is uh, this is actually one of the few songs we do that is not very old. This is actually just a middle-aged song. Uh, this is a song by Dr. John called Wild Honey.
Thomas Matthews and Elizabeth Lee, my God. Thank you. I wish I could. <laughs> uh, I can't really do it this way around either, so that would be test tempting fate. Um, this is a very, very, uh, another very, very old song. This is by, uh, written by a man who some people believe, well, he himself believed that he had invented jazz. Uh, it's a big claim to make, but he had, he had some uh, evidence for it. His name is Jelly Roll Norton. And uh, besides being an incredible piano player, he also wrote some beautiful songs and did some amazing things that, that changed the whole landscape. Um, and uh, Sister Jean is now going to sing for us uh, to what is to me one of his greatest songs I, I, I've always loved. It's called, I Hate a Man Like You.
this is a song, uh, that was an unattractive thing to do, I'm sorry, I wish I had done that. Uh, this is a song, um, well, how can I describe this? It's just a song I've loved since the very, very first time I heard it, and every time I hear it, I never wanted to stop. Uh, it just uh, does strange things to me that I can't and probably shouldn't explain. Um, anyway, the song, it, it was actually a tune written, <coughs> written by a man called Billy Taylor, and uh, lyrics were added later for a version by the great Nina Simone, but this is a song that uh, means a very great deal to me. This is called I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel to Be Free. Thank you. 
short of seagulls in the queen. I have to stay out of the air. You're short of seagulls in the queen. What's going on? And everyone is changing places. Still, the world keeps moving on.